We're earning our reputation one story at a time. Now, John Hambrick and Giselle Fernandez, Channel 6 Action News. Prayer, even the White House recommended it today, though plenty of people have been praying for peace of their own volition. Among them, families of military personnel preparing for war in the Persian Gulf region. And the Bush administration says war could start at any time after the UN deadline for Iraq to withdraw from Kuwait. And that deadline is now 30 hours away. Good evening. I'm Giselle Fernandez. And I'm John Hambrick. Little hope for a diplomatic settlement. That's the official word from the White House tonight. The assessment of UN Secretary General Perez de Cuellar is even more gloomy. No hope. We begin our action team coverage with a rundown of today's developments in the countdown to war. Saddam Hussein's rubber stamp legislature today unanimously endorsed his no-concession stand on Kuwait to back it with blood and soul. While in other parts of the Arab world, such as Amman, Jordan, pro-Iraq rallies were held. And as Secretary of State Baker arrived home from war prep talks with allies, the European community set word it's abandoned the idea of another peace mission to Baghdad. This, after the UN Secretary General, who met with Saddam Hussein yesterday, advised such a mission would accomplish nothing. I has done what I had to do. I don't know whether others will do something, but it appears to me that uh, it is perhaps a little late. De Cuellar took his official and discouraging report to the UN Security Council well, late no. this afternoon. What do we want? Peace! Peace. What do we want it? Across the country, from San Francisco's Golden Gate, where an anti-war demonstration today stopped traffic, to Minneapolis, where there was a flag-burning sort of fracas, to Chicago's downtown, protests of war are mounting. You'll see South Florida's version shortly. A women's fast for peace is taking place not far from the White House itself in Washington's Lafayette Park. But in Congress, even among those who voted against backing the president's authority to wage war, there's a rallying spirit. The president has complied with our Constitution. He has the full backing of the United Nations. I have said from the very beginning that even though I did not think war, war was uh, wise at this time, that I felt it was justified. So I think it's time to rally behind the forces in the field I think it's time for us to rally behind the Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of State, and the President of the United States. The President of Yemen, one of Saddam Hussein's few allies, says that he's come up with a peace plan that the U.S. has accepted, one that involves an Iraqi withdrawal from Kuwait overseen by Arab and international forces, and calls for American-led multinational forces to pull out once Iraq agrees to leave. However, Nobody in Washington seems to know anything about this plan. No reaction at all from Washington. Only White House spokesman Martin Fitzwater's admonition for Americans to pray for their country and for their troops in the Gulf. And in South Florida and around the world, people are bowing their heads in prayer and holding vigils, asking their hoping for peace. Channel 6 Action News reporter Jessica Aguirre continues our team coverage now. She joins us from Hollywood, where one such vigil will be held tonight. Jessica, I see people already arriving. Uh, yes, there are a few people arriving, Giselle, and there certainly has been a lot of concern about the war. And there is no little doubt that as the deadline for Iraq to pull out of Kuwait draws nearer, pews across in churches across Dade and Broward will be full as people turn to God for solace. The doors at St. John Vianney's Chapel in West Dade were open today for the seventh day in a row. For the last week, the faithful have gathered here to pray for peace in the Middle East and for the U.S. soldiers whose lives may soon be on the line. Everybody is concerned about the, you know, the, the war, and everybody wants to get rid of it. And they know that if they pray to God, God will give us peace. Bowed heads in prayer and clasped hands have become a familiar sight in South Florida, as loved ones of those in the Persian Gulf turn to God for comfort. This woman comes not only to pray for her family and friends, but also to pray for the Iraqis. Praying for their families, for their soldiers, and also for a conversion to uh, what is believed uh, to be a, uh, a tragic uh, moment in, our, in their lives as well as in our lives. Father Thomas O'Dwyer, rector at St. John Vianney's Chapel, believes that in times of trouble, prayer is the only thing which can ease a distressed soul and lift a heavy heart. It gives them a great courage and faith 
And that's what we try and tell them during, during these terrible days, is to hold on to their faith, that hope is still there. Just sell in about an hour and a half, this boardwalk will be lit by candles, candles for hope, as Broward's Peace and Justice Organization gathers here. They're planning to have a vigil to hold hands and mostly to pray. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Jessica. Today's gray skies were indicative of the mood of South Floridians with family ties to Operation Desert Shield. Channel 6 Action News reporter Kathleen Corso continues our team coverage with their story. Though Carol Faircloth was at work today, it was only in body, not in spirit. Her head and her heart are with her 21-year-old son, Ralph, who's in the Middle East. I'm very scared. I'm worried about all of them, not just my son, but all of them. It's very scary. For the new Mrs. Jack Woods, the day was spent thinking about the man she just married by proxy in a special ceremony last night. Though she knows it may not reach him for weeks, Jane Woods filled him in on their marriage in a letter that she wrote just this morning. My dearest love, Jack, the ceremony was very nice. Of course, it would have been a whole lot better if you would have been here. About the same time Jane was writing her letter, Linda Russo was on the phone with her son, Mike, who called her from somewhere in the Gulf this morning. He said he um, uh, hitched a ride 30 miles to a telephone and uh, didn't know how he was going to get back but didn't care and said that he just needed to talk to his mom today and was disappointed that his father wasn't home. Yeah. Though Jake Russo Every missed that while, call, somebody. he is still optimistic that he'll be talking to his son very soon. So knowing Mike and knowing his way of thinking, I, I think that he'll be over there. He'll do the job he has to do, and I, I really believe in that he'll come back safe. I really do. It seems that that's all anyone here in South Florida or around the world can hope for tonight that our young men and women will come home safely. In Fort Lauderdale, Kathleen Corso, Channel 6 Action News. Our team coverage leaves South Florida for the moment to take you to Washington, D.C., our nation's nerve center for the Gulf crisis, of course. Channel 6 Action News anchor Ken Matz is in D.C., has been all weekend. He joins us now via satellite with the latest from there. Ken? John, the city is preparing for war. You can almost feel the tension. And if you happen to be Arab American, you might face questioning by the FBI. There are homemade mosques like this in every major U.S. city, including Miami. And there are thousands of American Arabs like these protesting today before the Iraqi embassy in Washington. Iraq. Recent world events have called American Arabs to our attention like never before. The American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee claims 70 chapters across the nation with thousands of members. But the fact is, many Arab Americans have been called in for questioning by the FBI. This news conference was to complain about that. Albert McIver met this morning with FBI Director Sessions and minutes later said FBI interviews were based on flawed logic. Being an Arab American, by virtue of your, that ethnicity alone, makes you connected to or having special knowledge of terrorism or acts of terrorism that may occur in the United States. Thing is, says McIver, there has never been an American Arab involved in any act of terrorism in the United States except as victims. So he wants two things. Cessation of the policy with uh, clarification and an apology to the community for the particular distress that it has suffered in the last uh, week or 10 days since this new policy has been issued. FBI agent Gene Reel said interviewing American Arabs has a dual purpose to assess the potential for terrorist activity and to lay the groundwork for civil rights protections should American Arabs become targets of a backlash in event of war. Florida Senator Bob Graham says we'd better be careful. Arab Americans uh, are a very a contributory, loyal group of citizens of this country uh, and uh, need to be treated with that dignity and respect. To link them to terrorism, though, do you think that's fair just because they're Arab? No, I, I, don't, I don't think it's any more fair than it would be to round up uh, Americans of Irish descent because of the IRA. By the way, John, Senator Graham says he sees no other direction likely now other than war. And the first casualties, they might be American pilots who are set to deliver the first strike. And that seems to be the growing consensus. Thank you, Ken. We'll see you again during our 6.30 report. Giselle? John, back here, the home of South Florida's largest military community, is also hanging in the balance this evening. Homestead, where many of our airmen are based, is particularly somber in these final hours, praying and hoping for their safety. Continuing our action team coverage, Channel 6 Action News reporter Jackie Bales is in Homestead, where it is growing increasingly tense as the clock ticks on. Jackie?
It's pretty grim, Giselle. As you can see behind me, this F-4 Phantom Jet here at the Homestead City Line on US-1 is a symbol of the very close relationship between the people of this city and the military. And that relationship is one reason the people here may be more sensitive than most to the growing threat of war. Maybe it was just the gloomy weather, but some Homestead residents said their city seemed especially quiet today. Just a couple of yellow ribbons, the visible reminder of tomorrow's deadline. I think the uh, mood in the area is a little down because of the approaching deadline. And uh, so close to the base, I think a lot of people are just hanging back and watching their TV sets. And that's no wonder, with some 6,000 military service people and their family members living in the Homestead area, there is a special bond that has developed with the community. I don't know that if they're more attuned. I think everybody in the country is attuned. I just think that it brings it closer to home here because the military is such an important part of this community. It was quiet in the afterburner bar, too, where the joke Iraqi calendar hangs on the wall with no numbers after the 15th, where squadron insignia simply say, prepared to go. Really Tech Sergeant support. Lawrence Coleman wonders if he'll be heading out. I get a paycheck when it's time for it to come around, so if they call me, hey, I'll go. Perfectly ready to go? No regrets? No, none, none whatsoever. None whatsoever. And the mood on Homestead Air Force Base itself. Uh, everything seems pretty quiet. Everybody is going about their business. But I think everybody understands that tomorrow is going to be the deadline, and after that, anything could happen. Now, it is not lost on Homestead residents that sitting here as they do between the Turkey Point nuclear power plant and Homestead Air Force Base, that they could be potential targets of terrorism. Of course, security has been beefed up extremely at both of those places. We understand that Homestead police are also offering their assistance for added security if they should be needed. Giselle? Thank you very much, Jackie. Approximately 600 U.S. servicemen and women from Homestead Air Force Base are now part of Operation Desert Shield. Some sent to other bases statewide and the rest to the Gulf region. The fear of war has settled over the University of Miami campus. That's because classes resume today after the long holiday break. How do our young people who have chosen college over the armed forces feel about the prospect of war? Our team coverage focuses now on that side of the story with Action News reporter Beverly Counts Rodriguez. Unlike the 70s, when anti-war demonstrations were very much a part of life at the University of Miami, today all was calm. The only hint of protest was this bulletin, advertising a peace rally tomorrow at Florida International University. <laughs> but if anti-war sentiment was not visible, it certainly was on the mind of some draft-age college men who know if the draft is reinstituted, they would not be exempted, as students were for the Vietnam War. I'm pretty scared because um, ever since the word of war was uh, introduced, I said to myself, I've been working so hard, going to school for over 18 years, and uh, one day it may just be taken away because of a draft. Marlon Ferdinand will have absolutely no choice. He's an Army reservist as well as a student, but he doesn't believe in our reasons for being in the Persian Gulf. There's a lot of situations that have been just as this, and we haven't fought. I see it as more as a financial problem than a problem of concern. Student government Senator Drew Chulak says he's also scared, but he does believe in the U.S. position. It hits close to home to me, but yet again I see where well, we do need to use force. The draft, if instituted, would involve young men age 18 and older. But what about young women? Though there are many women serving in the Persian Gulf right now, the draft would not include women. And many young college women we talked with today said they have no intention of volunteering. I don't believe in the cause, and I don't think we should be fighting. I would leave for Canada or Mexico. In the meantime, both college men and women said they'll be listening carefully to news reports and hoping that their worst fears of war and draft do not come true. In Carl Gables, Beverly Counts Rodriguez, Channel 6 Action News. This late word just into Action News. Iraq's United Nations ambassador says that French Foreign Minister Roland Dumas will probably visit Baghdad in an 11th hour peace effort. No further details are being given except to say that Dumas will probably go to Iraq tomorrow. Let's take a look now at the bottom line in the showdown in the Gulf. Today, Iraqi lawmakers gave Saddam Hussein 
full power to deal with the Gulf crisis. President Bush warned that Iraq is living on borrowed time if it does not get out of Kuwait by tomorrow's deadline. The European community has canceled its peace mission to Baghdad, but Yemen leaders are said to be on the way to Iraq to try a last-ditch effort for peace. And our action team coverage of the showdown in the Gulf will continue on Action News at 6.30. Ken Matz will report live from Washington on the controversy over women in combat. And Bud Fraga will tell us what high school students are learning about the crisis as it, as it unfolds. And Diana Morgan will examine the anxiety that many Americans are feeling over the prospect of war. And then tonight at 7.30, Channel 6 will present a half an hour special, The Showdown in the Gulf. Anchors John Hambrick and Ken Matz will host this program. We'll examine the chance of war and its impact on South Florida. That is tonight at 7.30, immediately following the CBS Evening News. The rest of the day's news is still ahead on this edition of Channel 6 Action News. But first, your link to the Gulf crisis. It's right here with the Action News Gulf link. Best grab a pencil. We do have some phone numbers for you. Operation Homefront is a support group for those with loved ones stationed in the Gulf. And that number in Dade is 252-1215. In Broward, there are two numbers on your screen, 486-4485 and 486-8957. For information about citizens traveling abroad and travel advisories, you can call the State Department at 1-202-647-5225. And if you would like to give blood, call the American Red Cross at 1-800-448-3543. Stay with Channel 6 through this crisis. Let Action News be your link to the Gulf. I knew at that time he was dead. They didn't even have to tell me. Senseless games that ended in death. They've never apologized. They've never shown any kind of remorse. And survivors coping with their own private pain. I made a terrible mistake, and he had to pay for it, and I have to live with it. When I pull the trigger, God is my witness. I will shoot me to me. Accidental killers on the next Geraldo. Tomorrow at 5 on Channel 6. If your nights are getting later and later, chances are the sag of your mattress is getting deeper and deeper. You need a beauty rest. Its unique individually wrapped coils are pre-compressed to give you a comfortable mattress that stays forever firm. Sleep on a beauty rest and hear something you haven't heard in years. Good night, hon. Beauty rest by Simmons. Forever firm. Now available at Mattress City. Low prices are just the beginning. We have experts in every department who can help you with whatever you need. And our Home Depot people not only know what they're doing, they like what they're doing. When you're with us at Home Depot, you feel right at hard to believe, but it's been almost one year since I first reported on charges of child sex abuse at a prominent Dade County church in my series, Was There a Devil in Our Church? Now, at last, trial is getting underway for Bobby Finney, the teenager charged with abusing youngsters left in his care. Channel 6 Action News reporter Cliff Caldwell sat in on the first day of jury selection. He says it could be a very long, long process. Please don't be nervous or apprehensive about it as we go Judge along. Norman Gerstein welcomed 40 potential jurors into his courtroom, then okay. anticipating a lengthy process, quickly dismissed half until tomorrow. Today, however, is the first day of jury selection in the trial of now 15-year-old Bobby Finney. Finney is charged with seven counts of sexual battery against a minor and one count of lewd and lascivious behavior also with a minor while watching the three kids at the old Cutler Presbyterian Church Nursery. Gerstein's questioning of the first potential juror, Mr. Leach, a Dade County firefighter, quickly drew objections from the prosecutor, worried some of the potential 900 witnesses may know him. They are proper folks for the fire department. I'm not sure which part of it. 
Defense attorney Mel Black raised questions about Action News' camera being in the court, then questioned the judge's questioning of a potential juror. That drew a testy response from Gerstein. What's the difference between the way you framed your question and the way I framed my question in terms of it actually eliciting a response? Is it just because yours is yours and mine is mine? However, the trial's not yet ready to take off. You see, the judge has yet to hand down his complete decision regarding the youngster's videotaped hearsay testimony. Gerstein says some taped testimony between the psychologist and the alleged victims may be allowed, but he'll limit it to keep the trial moving along. In Miami, Cliff Caldwell, Channel 6, Action News. Now, so far, Bobby Finney is charged with the sexual abuse of three youngsters. But investigators are looking into the possibility that as many as two dozen children were victimized, and they continue to investigate the possibility that child pornography and ritual satanic worship were also involved. Channel 6 Action News learned today exclusively that prosecutors are interviewing a satanic crimes expert who worked on the Ted Bundy and Wayne Williams murder cases. Anna Maria Cardona, the mother of baby lollipop, says that she is not guilty of murdering her three-year-old son. In court today, Cardona and her companion, Olivia Gonzalez, both pleaded not guilty to first-degree murder and child abuse charges. The two, of course, are suspected of beating Lazaro Figueroa, known as baby lollipops, then dumping his body in Miami Beach last November. Cardona's trial date was set for April 15th. Still ahead on Channel 6 Action News, Maria De Niro has our relatively chilly forecast. And it has been the first, our weather school question. Weather school. I was easy, easy, easy on you last week. Today's question is just a bit tougher. Here it is. Take a look. Which instrument measures wind speed only? There's the key. Is it a wind vane, an aero vane, or an anemometer? I'll be back with the answer in just a moment. Dear Walgreens, I'd like to tell you about my experience. I was visiting from out of state when my wife got seriously ill. She required numerous medications, so I appreciate the low prices at Walgreens. And I'd like to thank your pharmacist. They were very considerate. Being 1,100 miles from home made Walgreens service that much sweeter. It's midnight. Do you know who is filling doctor's prescriptions at this hour? Who? Your 24-hour Walgreens. That's who. Ready to go to Sizzler? Yeah, we don't want to miss that deal. Precisely. Let's take the bike. The bike? Ah, we'll cut through traffic and fly like the wind. Now Sizzler's offering the combination they made famous. Steak and all-you-can-eat shrimp. A juicy sirloin and all the gender-fried mini shrimp you want. A lot of food for a shrimp of a price. Sizzler. Buffet Court and Grill, a restaurant within a restaurant. So are we going to take your car or what? H&R Block can get you every possible dollar that you have coming. America's tax team wants to save you money on your taxes. We are trained to find every credit and every deduction that the tax law allows. Income taxes are all we do. We're here whenever you need us. I will find you the maximum refund that you're entitled to. We're going to take the worry out of your tax return. The tax team stands behind its work. No wonder more people choose Block to get their tax returns done right. We're America's tax team. Put us to work for you. Let's face it, nobody wants to pay real estate commissions. So when you want to sell your home, call by owner. In just a few months, we sold our home and saved over $7,000. I just want to say thank you, by owner. Brokers couldn't do a thing for me. It took one call to buy owner. Thank you, by owner. Three years ago, I bought my home with the help of by owner. And now I've sold, saving thousands of dollars. Thank you, by owner. Call the original by owner. Where's you that makes the difference? Call now. Well, we like this cooler weather. I know you like it. Yeah, I it's do. It's a nice well. change of pace. Unfortunately, I have company in town, and they arrived just for the gloomy weather, so they don't need. It's Murphy's Law. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'll be clearing up, though, a bit. We do have another funnel system on the horizon. It probably will arrive here Wednesday evening. Until then, though, we will get into a little bit of sunshine and temperatures warming just a bit. Let's get outside behind the weather camera tonight. We had Ralph Madison. He was out at Tropical Park. Yeah, it is. It's football weather, isn't it? Nice and cool. Miami right now, 69 degrees. The beach is 72. Fort Lauderdale is also carrying a 72 degree reading. Surf temperature right now has gone down. It is 75 degrees. Winds are out of the north at 7 miles an hour, pulling down some cooler air. 
Pressure is holding steady. Lester off uh, all attention, of course, is in the Middle East. We'll take a look at the weather there right now. Just a little bit of a cloud cover throughout Iran. Temperatures have been running with lows probably in the lower 50s, highs topping off in the mid-70s throughout the past couple of days, and we expect more of the same throughout tomorrow. Let's get back home and take a look at our weather, put all this in motion. This was a cold front which had moved down to the south and is now moving back up to the north in the form of a warm front. Yeah. However, it is bringing in just a lot of cloud cover and rain. Let's go to radar right now and see exactly where all the rain is. You can see bands of shower activity. This is moving fast to the northeast at 40 miles an hour. Throughout tonight and also tomorrow morning, we'll continue to see some cloudy skies and showers, but by tomorrow afternoon, we should shape up. Take an overall view of the U.S., see what we have, put all the weather in motion. Basically, it was very, very calm. Another storm system, and this one's going to be very strong, is now brewing throughout Texas. As a matter of fact, they have tornado warnings. Yeah, warnings in effect throughout the eastern portion of Texas that's going to arrive here probably Wednesday night. Here's my forecast for tonight. Mostly cloudy, 30% chance of rain, 60 to 64 tomorrow. Not great in the morning, clearing in the afternoon, 74 to 77. It will be warmer. If you're boating tomorrow, winds will be out of the southeast at 10 to 15 knots. Seas 2 to 4 feet, choppy in the morning, moderating during the afternoon. High tide 709, low tide 124. Here are the next five days. It looks as though tomorrow afternoon we will clear up, remain clear throughout most of Wednesday, cloud up Wednesday night and be rainy again for Thursday. Okay, time for the weather answer to my weather question. Take a look at it one more time. Which instrument measures only wind speed? What do you think it was? Come on. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it is an anemometer. Yeah, an aero vane measures both wind speed and direction, and a wind vane measures only direction. We want to get schools in Dade, Broward, and Monroe counties involved in our weather school. If you want, if you're a teacher or principal, please write Maria Gennaro's weather school. There's the address there on your screen. We will get off all the necessary information. We have disks for uh, computers. We have workbooks, the whole nine yards. Just write us. Thank you, Maria. See you at 630. Steve standing by, and we'll be back to sports in just a minute. From the campfires of the Andes to the boulevards of Buenos Aires, from the business centers of Brazil to the wine cellars of Santiago, American Airlines is opening doors all over Latin America. With more flights to more destinations throughout Central and South America than any other U.S. airline. So now you can fly American for business or pleasure to 21 cities in 16 countries, which means the best way to Latin America is right through this door. American Airlines. During the holiday period, I suppose, it's the most difficult time for all of us. Diane Carroll makes the healthy choice resolution. But this is a lovely thing to come back to. Because it has everything we need. And because it tastes so darn good. Healthy choice entrees are more than low calorie. They're lowest in fat, sodium, and cholesterol. A delicious and intelligent approach to healthier eating. Healthy choice is not naughty. And this is easy to go back to. Listen to your heart. Make the healthy choice. If you're a Florida resident, $21 gets you one full day at the Disney MGM Studios theme park. Experience movie magic at our all-new Honey, I Shrunk the Kids Adventure Zone. Or $21 gets you one full day at Epcot Center, where you'll be dazzled by illuminations. Or one day at the Magic Kingdom, where you can feel the thrill of Big Thunder Mountain. And stay at selected Disney resorts from just $110 a night plus tax. Now until February 10th, only at Walt Disney World. Well, the Dolphins are going home, <laughs> if their home happens to be, permanent home happens to be someplace else. And then the uh, <laughs> annual joke is they go to the, the golf course. Or the tennis court, or whatever. <laughs> this morning, the Dolphins pack their bags, they leave camp until next season. Our John Dutzman was there to capture the wide range of emotion. Since July, they've been a team, one unit. Now it's time to say goodbye and become individuals again. For Jim Jensen, this means spending more time with his dog and family. Yeah, I'm going to uh, spend a lot of time with my son and uh, 
it's, it'll be good because, you know, I haven't had a lot of time with him, so, uh, and he's getting to that point where he needs me. Terry Glenn leaves with a football autographed by his teammates. Better things next year, you think? Better things, I promise you. I promise, that's big. Hey, I'm sure. And something tells me Dan Marino will be back next year. How many years do you think you have left, Dan, in that body of yours? No, I won't play forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, a young guy yet. I'm only 29. And I guess it's only fitting that on this final day of camp, we have one more controversial story involving this team's most unique individual, Tim McKayer. A story today that teammate Hugh Green pinned McKayer against a wall and insisted that he keep his mouth shut. Nothing happened. Uh, you know, the guys, I might have annoyed a lot of guys, but it wasn't to the point to where one would want to physically, uh, you know, get with me. I might be small, but, uh, you know, I can kind of put the big ones down, too. Though. Then there's Lifford Hobley, a guy who lost his young daughter in a swimming pool accident this summer. It helped me to uh, get through the season this year. It helped me to work harder and uh, know that you can't take life for granted. A knee injury makes Hobley's future here uncertain. But perhaps more than anyone, he knows that life does not stop when the football is over. John Dutzman, Channel 6, Action Sports. All right, John. The Heat at home tomorrow night against Orlando. I talked to the Heat and the NBA offices in the event of war. There is no plan yet to change the schedule, so the Heat is expecting to play. Houston Rockets center Akeem Olajuwon, after getting hammered by Bill Cartwright January 3rd, today operated on for a fractured bone behind his right eye. A small Teflon plate was inserted. Guess you never know when you're going to need a good Teflon plate. <laughs> Halftime of the Lakers game last night from half court. Swish. That's worth $42,000. Can you blame the guy for flipping out? He could probably dunk the ball now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, is there some tough one on my seat? Like that? That's it for the 6 o'clock edition of Channel 6 Action News. Thank you for having us in for news. Yes, we'll see you again tonight at 11 o'clock. Diana Morgan joins us now with what's new at 6.30. Hello, Thank Diana. Thank you, John and Giselle. Are more Eastern layoffs in the future? Many of the no say it's just the cost of survival for that floundering airline. And surviving the battle that may rage in the Gulf. Doctors say it is forcing those of us stateside to fight a psychological war within our and Channel 6 Action News anchor Barbara Sloan is home with her new bottle of joy. We'll have pictures, and it's all just seconds away. Now, Barbara Sloan and Ken Matz, Channel 6 Action News.